A very warm hello. My name is Paul Wanibe. I'm the Group Chief Executive of Landmark Africa. Landmark is a business, leisure, and lifestyle destination company. It's with so much pleasure to be here today for the fourth edition of the West African Tourism Roundtable Series to talk about sustainability of our sector in this, our precious region. I would so much like to thank Red Clay for creating this platform to discuss the issues and the solutions for this vital industry in such an important region. So much has been said about the tourism value chain and all that it incorporates. The potential of this industry as a catalyst for economic growth knows absolutely no bounds. Do you know that one in every 12 jobs on planet Earth are created in, in this industry? Did you also know that 10% of the global GDP comes from this industry? More importantly, 1.4 billion customers per year patronize this industry. And it's an economic driver for so many related industries. The importance of the tourism sector cannot be overemphasized as a leisure has a profound influence on health, efficiency, social behavior, satisfaction, and the general welfare of the community. Tourism West Africa truly is ready to explode. To quote John Hemingway, one of my favorite authors, if I have ever seen magic, it has been in Africa. This statement has never been so true. There's a real opportunity in Africa to showcase to the rest of the world what we really have on this continent. West Africa must come to the table, so must Nigeria. The opportunity really is now. I tell you something, I'll tell you a personal story. I recall the very first time I brought my two children to Africa. My son was eight, my daughter was nine. We lived in the UK. They were scared to come, having been fed all sorts of negatives by the Western media. Well, they came, they saw, and I like to say they conquered. You know, they saw a variety of animals, not in captivity. They saw the hills and the valleys, the mountains and the rivers, clear sun and sand, some of the traditional markets, the beautiful pottery, some of the plants, the fruits, the vegetation. And I tell you something, most of all, they met some of the most colorful and exotic people on planet Earth. It was their best holiday ever. And I can tell you something, to date, it was probably my cheapest. Well, a few months ago, something drastic happened. In March 2020, it came like a thief at night, and it brought in a global pandemic, creating a health, a security, and an economic crisis that decimated this industry. We stand today, perhaps on the most significant moment of our history. We're living in the most turbulent and challenging times of our generation. Our resolve, our belief systems, and our courage are all being tested as never before. Tourism, economic, and welfare indicators are all underwater. 98% of this industry came to a complete standstill. 7,000 airplanes were grounded 18 months ago. 45% of the jobs in this industry were cut. The entire world lost $1.3 trillion in export revenue via the tourism industry. It's literally been bloodshed in this industry. There truly is blood on the streets. So how do we get out of it to create and sustain tourism in our region? Well, we need to account for our current and future economic, social, and environmental impacts. Whilst we address the needs of our visitors, the industry, the environment, and most importantly, the host communities. A sustainable tourist, tourism industry provides so many things. First of all, well-paid and stable jobs. It protects our heritage. It creates wealth. It prevents the capital flight. And as you know, it drives several industries. It drives the travel industry, the leisure industry, the sports industry, the property industry, the cultural industry and the retail industries. It's a real catalyst for economic growth and it's something we simply can't ignore. Well, as we set out to improve the tourism landscape, we need to examine what those trends are in Nigeria. Um, well, as you know, Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria, is the fastest growing city in Africa and it accounts for over 60% of the tourism industry in the country if you're counting both on spend and footfall. 
in this whole hospitality industry. So Lagos is extremely important to the growth of tourism in this region. Tourism in Nigeria pre-COVID accounted for 5.1% of the country's GDP. It generated in excess of a billion dollars across all facets of the industry. Over 4.8% of the people were directly employed in the tourism sector. That tells you one in 20 people employed were employed in the tourism sector. Still has some way to catch up with the rest of the world, which is one in 10, but it tells you how important it is. So what are the benefits of a viable and sustainable tourism industry in West Africa? Well, firstly, as I said, mass employment generation. It has the ability to employ a whole series of people, both skilled and unskilled, right? The global statistics of one in 10 tells the story on its own. Secondly, it's the major contribution to the local economy of food, beverages, arts, and crafts. Not to talk of the travel and the hotel, right? So it gives you so much more from an economic standpoint. Thirdly, improvements in transport. Well, transport infrastructure generally, the roads, the air, the rail, and the water. In addition, the reversal of capital flight from the West. Hmm? Plus the added benefits of showcasing our region to the foreigners to bring in the foreign direct investment. So it's a great recipient of foreign exchange into the region. Every organization in the region has a part to play. My company Landmark, we took a seat at the table six years ago and we set out then to create West Africa's number one business, leisure and lifestyle destination. I know quite a few years before that, I took a helicopter ride over Lagos and I was looking at Lagos from a property development point of view. And I was thinking, where do we create literally heaven on earth? Well, I came as a tourist and I spotted this piece of land somewhere along the Atlantic Ocean without any form of development. There were no roads, there were no buildings, there were no people. It was just this, the sea and vegetation. Well, for those of you that know Lagos, this area sat between the bustling districts, business district of Victoria Island and the grown residential cor corridor of the Lekki Expressway. So initially I decided, you know, let's buy the land. We, we bought the land, we, we purchased a tent and we put this tent on the site. Basically a place to create events, to attract people for concerts, parties. We needed to find a way to attract many people to this area so people would get used to coming to the area, right? Over the years, we began to add things. We began to add retail, hospitality, education, health, business units. Well, I'm very proud today to say today, the landmark Lagos destination is the most visited place on the West African coastline. It houses several industries from business, education, health, sporting, leisure, retail, media, and of course, hospitality. Since the beginning, we've created foreign direct investments of over $270 million. In 2021 till date, we've generated over $45 million within this ecosystem. We've hosted over 280 events pre-COVID. We've employed over 4,000 people, both directly and indirectly. In the 18 months prior to March, 2020, we welcomed over 6 million visitors on our soil. We're still trying to create our own dink in the universe, but it's a good place to start. There's so much more potential for so much more to be done like this. As we know, the industry is not without its challenges in our region. There's several impediments to success. There are many instances where the local authority and the larger government allow the degradation and the degeneration of our infrastructure in very high footfall and attractive areas there is an abnormally low investment in assisting with the growth from both the state and the federal authorities. The high unemployment rate turns an opportunity into a real threat. The government policies are either neutral or hostile towards a growing industry. The perception of security and the arrival experience needs deliberate and intentional action by the government. These problems are not stop signs, they're really only guidelines. They're baskets of solutions, much of them we've touched already today. The most robust solutions require a handshake, a real firm handshake between the private and the public sector. These entail 
We need to prioritize our heritage sites. We need to create world-class infrastructure, roads, rail, water, air. We need to write up a proper executable policy to create sustainable incentives for the tourism sector. The government has a huge role to play here. We need to ensure there's adequate training in the hospitality industry, and we need to dedicate ourselves to this. And lastly, I tell you something, we really need to build security infrastructure within all our local communities. So not just the perception, but the reality of the security situation has been solved. This will truly help us make the first steps to embrace, to embrace a sustainable thinking journey. The benefits will include a very long-term viable economic entity, a whole series of long-term viable economic entities by the way, which would boost employment, boost productivity, boost efficiency, and basically develop the environment. We need to begin, it will begin to, we'll begin to respect social, cultural authenticity of the host communities. So these communities can not only benefit, right, but can actually live a life of a lot more pleasure and security. Yes. We need to conserve our natural heritage. We need to beautify this environment. We need to stop wasting our natural resources, our cultural heritage, our beaches, are areas that most people want to see and should remain untouched. And we basically need to optimize the use of our environmental resources and ensure that we create real sustainability in, in, um, in delivering our hospitality. Well, I would say I have a four point strategy to sustainability. And this, this four point strategy is as follows. Mm -hmm. One, to improve the regulatory environment. To improve this regulatory environment, we need to cut the red tape. We need to come up with a policy that enables the tourism industry. We need to ensure that the incentives from a tax perspective, from a finance perspective, and from a regulatory perspective to encourage the tourism industry. Number two, we need to upgrade the relevant infrastructure. I've spoken already about it, the roads, the rail, the air, we need to improve security, it's number three. As I said, both the perception of security and the reality of security. We need people to feel safe. We need the environment to be beautified. We need to improve the visitor experience. And lastly, we need to maintain the rule of law. Contracts must be obeyed. Consumers must be protected. Buildings must be built. Licenses must be given, right? Things should not be as difficult to create and maintain. The rule of law is such an important part of the fabric of society. Well, all I can say is thank you very much. I will be extremely happy to take questions, comments, and even happier for any criticism. Thank you very much. Have a great day.